Good morning and welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader for January 29. 29er. Um, all is quiet across uh, the continents and the world. Uh, Asia overnight was slightly mixed. Uh, Japan was up and China was down 10 bips. Um, over in Europe, uh, our market started soft in uh, S&P futures last night, um, but overall, um, they um, they um, came back, and now they're up 350. Um, Europe, overall quiet. I saw there was some Brit exit news. Uh, I think eight new amendments. Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to do that deal. Um, we didn't really talk yesterday. We talked a little bit about uh, crypto. I want to talk, uh, I'm joined by Vince and Mike. I want to talk about crypto when we just run through quickly, uh, really the markets we're focused on. But I think it would be uh, an interesting chat again today as the contract kind of goes back to the uh, low of the move, uh, all time low of the contract. Uh, obviously not of Bitcoin, but of the uh, CME, CME listing. Um, Big earnings today from Apple. We're excited about that. Uh, they shouldn't be that good in my mind, but the stock has gotten beaten down and they have a uh, bullish tone uh, yesterday. Obviously, Caterpillar missed a lot of, I think, Triple M missed today. A lot of these big multinational companies with exposure to China and in general exposure across uh, the world are, are missing. Uh, I do not see how Apple makes the number today, but maybe they lowered it enough to do that. s and P's up four, NASDAQ up 15, DAX up 32, Nikkei up about 60 basis points. Oil started weak, uh, reversed with the S&P. That is really uh, locked into S&P's uh, in general. Uh, I want to just quickly touch on that gas it, two dollars and ninety cents and two dollars and eighty seven cents in the march contract uh taking back all of the move and actually is lower from the initial move so whatever that problem was that they had um it was resolved um that's a complete weather market i guess and if it's cold for a week it goes up 35 percent, and then it comes back in you know yep. when it gets warm ironically or uh, if i can interject into that sure uh, last um, as an experienced buyer of natural gas calls that never worked for me, um, uh, I will say this. Uh, Bryn Kelly made a couple good points uh, over the past several days. And uh, uh, the cold weather, actually, uh, I'm not sure how it's affecting um, uh, Midwest gas, uh, uh, you know, Citygate gas or, 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 or Rockies. But uh, on the East Coast, uh, the Tetco uh, and pipeline issue is part of the problem, you know. Uh, the infrastructure is part of the problem. And I know that's not something for active traders to, to focus on, but if you see cold weather coming in the Northeast, <laughs> excuse me, and Bless you don't you. see natural gas rallying, you know, don't be in denial. It could be infrastructure related. The natural gas just can't get to where it's going. It gets diverted. But uh, that's something for, for Bryn to uh, discuss more uh, in more detail. That is something uh, I'm going to be asking her myself. But it is rather disappointing, especially if you were around for the excitement of uh, of uh, the March contract last month. Was that March that moved or was it? I think it was Jan Feb that well, like, exploded. Well, it, it, it was. It was. I, I'm sorry. What? Yes, it was. It was the winter contracts. But even in the winter, I focus on March because that's, uh, for example, if you're if you're uh, not to get too into natural gas. But uh, uh, people uh, look at the winter strip, and that's Novi through March. And uh, what inevitably happens is if the weather is cold, uh, they start to sell their March contracts and buy their Novi contracts so they can cover their just-in-time concerns. And I usually look at the March-April spread to determine uh, how bad the end of the draw season will be. But, yeah, the play was the January contract. Uh, I, just, I think March, in my mind, just out of habit in history. Uh, that's usually the most fun uh, uh, to trade, and uh, uh, apparently I was wrong this year, but that's an old habit. I, I don't – Question oh, for you. Just jump into a different topic a bit, but in gold, is gold market grinding higher telling us that the Fed – the market is expecting the Fed to be dovish tomorrow? You know, um, Mike, uh, my, my first – before I answer that question, I just want to say this. 
I, I'm long gold now. I will be flat by the end of the day. Uh, and that's because uh, gold does have a tendency to gap and move too quickly. Uh, if I were to express a position, I do it with options right now. But to answer your question directly, I think if you were looking for a reason, uh, a, a potential reason for the rally in gold, well, first of all, obviously the dollar's weaker, and you know that as an FX guy. Uh, the question is, why is the dollar weaker? Why is gold performing the way it is? And 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 I think a big reason for that is is uh, uh, one uh, trade optimism. Uh, I don't know why, but that's it. Uh, two, uh, government shutdown. And I think the thing that started gold rallying a couple of days ago, I think the thing that really got it off uh, uh, and actually started the dollar sell off was that headline, the rumor of Powell having to back off on uh, the QT concept, uh, which was, uh, which we'll find out if that's true or not when the FOMC comes out this week. So if you want to play it from a classic point of view, Mike, whether you're playing the dollar, gold, or the euro, or anything that has to do with uh, the, uh, the government FOMC, uh, gold was by the rumor. And I don't know if I should be selling the news, but I sure as heck am going to be flat going into the news. So I'm going to say I would lay this almost entirely at QT, potentially being backed off feet. Uh, for gold to rally, and it's also bolstered the stock market. So uh, uh, gold is now at a level uh, where it can have a spike higher and reversal lower. For me, it's at a dangerous level. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I do want to say this because it's just fun to say. Remember, we we're trading in the teens in the 1200 area, and I said gold hates teens. Gold hates the teens at every level. And if we get the 13, 15, I have no idea where it's going to go. So uh, I'll be out by the end of the day. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, it, it's funny how fast, I mean, it didn't move fast in any one day, but it just, you know, kind of zipped up here. Because I remember it might have been a month ago or two months ago, we were talking, you know, about the teens at the 12 hundred level um yeah. so it's moved about a hundred it's interesting it went from 1400 it's done it's funny because really i guess the trend following ctas haven't been doing too well in general but overall there's been unbelievable trends i mean gold went from 1400 to 11 whatever that low was that night where the we op made trader the low. low the op trader <laughs> low but and also and then also oil went from seventy dollars and change down to four thirty something dollars and change and then um, and then right back. So the trends have been unbelievable. The S and P went straight down twenty percent and straight up thirteen percent. So I'm not sure why trend followers wouldn't be doing well in this market because these moves have extended almost in every market. Um, you know, this month the S and P is up six percent for the month. Probably the best start in any January ever. But you have um, to remember, they came in heavily short S and P. Right. You, so, you bring, but and they but came in bring heavily up, short crude, which reversed. So S and P. But why wouldn't they reversals. get right? But why wouldn't if crude went from basically forty one? When are they getting long? Never. <laughs> They're shorted. I get it, but they can't be they, shorted. They had a good. They had a good uh, December. They're having a bad January. Really? If I can, if I can interject uh, uh, to the point of uh, uh, trend, uh, if uh, and and it doesn't have to be gold, but it just happens to be gold right now. If you put up a weekly chart of gold uh, that goes back to say uh, uh, April, uh, and, and this is reliable factual information, CTAs, which are you know I'm a trend follower, right, Larry? But I'm a short term guy. But CTAs that are trend followers are a little bit more long term. And I think that any CTA that followed trend and things like the S&P got chopped up. But I know for a, I would have to say, almost um, uh, metaphysical fact that the CTA market nailed it when they sold gold in June uh, because it just kept, they sold it. The CTA, a lot of the CTAs, trend followers, sold gold. And as you can see, gold wasn't really volatile. It just kept moving down to CTA stream. And I also am pretty sure uh, that the CTA stop levels were in the 1250 to 1280 area, depending on where they are. And you could see in the rally on a weekly basis, it wasn't so smooth on the way down, but any CTA that covered 
uh, uh, sometime in October uh, or even earlier, September, uh, nailed it. But like you said, uh, uh, there have been trends, uh, but they haven't been low volatile trends. Uh, uh, and that's been to your benefit as, a, as, a, as an active trader. But uh, the only market that, and, and I say only, the, the move that made CTA's money last year was the gold move down. And um, uh, uh, believe me, I got information. <laughs> I got a report. Give you an idea of what's going on out there. I got a report from a bank that has CTAs as a client in October saying, quote, our CTA client base is short from 1250, 1280, 1300. We think they're over short and recommend buying now. That's a comment on the industry in and of itself. But the point is there was nothing else out there. The CTAs, I think, got killed in everything except for something like gold. So um, uh, the question is, uh, uh, do you understand as a trader the difference between trend and volatility? And uh, uh, the S&P has had a lot of volatility. Yeah, um, I agree with you. Um, I, I think overall that... You know, markets are trending. They're trending higher. Um, I just don't know where we're going to stop. I don't know if you have any levels on the upside in S&P. You know, um, it's funny because the last couple of days, all my levels were FX related, you know, with whatever happened uh, uh, to the dollar. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the S&P, uh, well... I have, a, I have levels, but I don't trust them because we're going into an event and it feels like it's going to be a choppy level. But the levels are on a scale of one to five, one being the least reliable. Uh, uh, I see 2661 on the mini and 2628 as levels to trade breakouts or fade for the range. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really convinced about anything. I mean, I actually have stuff on, uh, when we get to it, individual stocks and Bitcoin uh, worth looking at, but the S and P, I just, you know, like you said, the S and P actually is uh, my mistake. In the way down, the S and P wasn't trending; it was just, you know, moving in a direction with major volatility. And yeah, we have been trending for the last, you know, uh, uh, since December twenty sixth. It has actually been a trend higher. So I'll, I'll stand corrected on that. But I see nothing today uh, that I could rely on in the S and P per se, unfortunately. I think uh, I think overall today is going to be quiet all around the board. Uh, markets are higher. Market just seems like it wants to go higher no matter what. I mean, we've had really bad earnings, and the S and P really is only about a percent and a quarter or percent off the high of the move. Um, they're trying to make this. Um, you know, it's funny. I remember in December, every day on CNBC, them saying, oh, this is the worst month since 1932, da, 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 the worst December. And now they're going with, this is the best December since uh, January since 1987. And, you know, who knows if it's going to be better than that. I don't know where it sits, but it's, it's pretty amazing that the market, because the year changed and I guess capital flowed in and there's a lack of liquidity that the market came all the way back here. But so, but, so, Larry, following up on what you just said before, you were, making, you were mentioning that it's in an uptrend. So does that mean that you'd be looking to buy dips or get long here? I would look to buy dips. I'd like to see, I would have liked to see it trade below 2,600. Uh, we got down to 26, 28, and I think we got down to the low 20s uh, yesterday, 21. Um, I'd like to see it a bit lower. I'm not going to buy at these levels. This isn't a dip enough to buy. But if you get some type of dip, a 2 or 3%, potentially for a counter trend trade, it might not be a bad idea to hop in and uh, look to buy for a uh, you know a quick scalp. Um, but for whatever reason, the market looks utterly strong, and I'm just not sure why. I don't know if it's uh, you know they're thinking that you know the, the fake news will put out positive China talk news at the end of the week when they come in or or whether you know we can have 10 bad earnings and apple could save the day that type of thing i do think it's thing. pretty interesting looking at the what what's transpired over the past seven or seven or so days if you take a look at the chart that everybody can see here you know we had the big rally up and out for the past 10 days we've moved sideways but in this past or seven days ish you know we've had um, a few opportunities to move lower and they came in supporting the market about that 2615 level twice 
We had bad news yesterday from NVIDIA, from Caterpillar, which are both bellwethers in their group. Um, and the market took a pretty well. We rallied into the close yesterday. And then even overnight, this Huawei news, this is news that was taking us down in December and November when it came out because the idea that this is really going to uh, um, uh, further the trade uh, tension between U.S. and China. Uh, and, you know, here we are. The futures are up a few points right now. And so they've definitely taken the punches and are uh, pretty resilient right here. Um, but that said, we're, we're getting a question from uh, the members asking, Larry, what sort of options, how would you express this in options? Is there anything you'd be looking at, um, whether it be for the week, with the Fed, with earnings, things of that nature? Um, I haven't really looked at the board uh, per se, um, but if you're going to play hey. Wednesday options, uh, potentially uh, you could look at a call, you know, straight spread or a put straight spread. Volatility is really low. Uh, I don't like really selling options here. Um, you could sell them, you know, interday for direction, but I don't like in general shorting a straddle. Um, I would I would say that your your best play is to get a little bit directional, do a vanilla call spread. If you're not as bullish or not as bearish, if you're doing a put spread, you could ratio it a little bit. But overall, you know, I want to wait to see Apple's earnings tonight before I make any decisions. Um, I'm expecting them not to be great. Looking at the Apple straddle, um, the Apple straddle is is quite low. It's it's only tr trading at about eight dollars. Um, you know, that's not even a four percent move. Uh, on earnings, which is relatively low, I don't know if that's because they sort of came out and said it wasn't going to be so. good, or, 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 or whatever. But you know, uh, this company has, um, you know, has in the past done things that uh, are outside the box, and they may beat earnings or miss earnings. You know, pretty good. They definitely off of manage this. expectations well, even if they aren't telling people what's going on anymore. I agree with that, Vince. They typically are very cautious in their guidance uh, because they'd rather beat and you know set low and then beat. Well, that's what I that's what I'm saying. You know, this company has been in the past. You know, having listen, they always beat because they just lower and lower the bar. But I actually think that they have some issues, and I I kind of think it's not only. I think it's a cool factor. I don't know how cool Apple is anymore. You know, I don't I don't see any of my kids literally asking me for a new phone every single phone that ever came out they asked for and now they're not that's, asking at all they don't even that's care a, that's a really solid point and uh, plays into something that i've noticed um going back to me uh, uh noticing about them uh, uh charging licensing fees for third-party cables i think and this is conjecture uh with a little bit of paranoia i think apple recognizes what you're saying and they're morphing into a less sexy company that's going to make more money off of what I call ecosystem, ecosystem platforms, meaning uh, they're going to start tra tra charging subscribers. Uh, they're going to start collecting on license fees. Uh, they're not going to be so sexy. Uh, they're going to, and you're seeing this now, they're going to start acquiring uh, uh, Rolodexes. Like people are joking, saying Apple should buy Netflix. Uh, I don't think something like that would that ever yesterday. happen. Apple. Right, exactly. Apple's going to buy video games. They bought Minecraft. Why? Because they're buying lists of people that don't use Apple. They're going to buy, and I'm making this up, uh, one of the most popular apps on their site, uh, on the, in the App Store, is a company that makes apps by called Supercell. Supercell kills it with games like uh, Clash of Clans, which I play, Clash Royale, which my son plays. Uh, these, you know, uh, uh, I'm doing research, by the way, when I play these games, guys. It's not for yeah, fun, sure. I swear. <laughs> um, but, 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 exact, but my point is, uh, 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 my, and to add my little conspiratorial comment to, to Larry's comment, you know, if you look at what they did, the, the, Apple, the Apple business model for years has been what's called a walled garden. And that means your app has to be in their store or you don't get in. And the walled garden model historically fails. And you can look it up on Wikipedia, but they made the walled garden a very successful model. And I think they're realizing that it's no longer sustainable and they're reinventing themselves. And part of that is 
Uh, we don't want people to see us changing our business model. We're going to stop reporting. We're going to take it on the chin. And something's going to be announced, like uh, maybe not today, but they're, I mean, they've got a lot of cash, right, Larry? They've got money to spend. And I think they're going to spend it on acquiring business through accretion, not through being sexy anymore. I'm saying Apple is about to become that, uh, that carousel that our grandparents used to uh, throw those slides into show vacation, but they're going to be very profitable. That's, that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to be a buyer of Apple as, as a true bellwether, not a tech stock, uh, although I don't have a level yet. Nice. Um, <laughs> I I think in general I'm that I'm sorry. I'm horrible. I'm, I'm horrible at sequiturs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just leave it out and there, right? Note, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. All good. Exactly. It's like the joke without the punchline. You know? Exactly. Sorry. I'm waiting. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh, okay. Um, any thoughts on Facebook or Amazon here? Some of the bigger there, names, you know, uh, I have several. I have several stocks on, on, on my radar that I'll just throw numbers out to not take up too much time. Um, uh, Facebook, my goodness, uh, uh, I have Facebook as having a, a, a serious inflection point. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean I know which way it's going to go, but you know, Facebook is something to pay attention to. If it trades one forty four oh six, a Bitcoin, right in the same family. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, my level, you know what? I have it here. Hold on. My Bitcoin level is, my Bitcoin basis cash level is, if we get below 3376 spot 14, uh, look for uh, increased volatility. And uh, the other stock that I'm looking at that's on my radar is actually Johnson & Johnson, which I just can't get any love for. Uh, but uh, I see it as a um, as a trade. If we get below, um, if we get below, if we get back above, I should say, if we get back above uh, 132. Other than that, uh, I actually I think you'd be interested in this Tesla, <laughs> which uh, which is everybody's I guess uh, uh, favorite to hate is uh, tentatively safe to be long again uh, for uh, a day or two above uh, 290, uh, 295 spot 47. That's but none of these are high confidence. Bell, right, none of these are high confidence trades. You know, uh, uh, and again, I wouldn't use a system that I use going into an earnings event. That's a Tom McEntee thing. Um, but I think the thing that is most interesting uh, playing to uh, uh, to, to Larry's comment is uh, is uh, is Facebook. I mean, uh, it's fallen so far; it might have a lot further to fall. And uh, it's going to uh, be dependent on whether or not Zuckerberg is the devil um, and comes out with uh, <laughs> fake numbers. <laughs> which you know, it's funny. He's never really been concerned about what anyone has thought or the stock, but recently, I've seen maneuvers that are you know. Very reminiscent of uh, people that are trying to hold up their stock. And he had never really been like that because really when the stock first came out, it got annihilated and he just basically, you know, took the heat. But now, I guess since he's a seasoned, you know, CEO or, you know, chairman of a company, he knows how to play the game and he and he wants his stock to go higher. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, when they report how they how they do, um, Apple will be for sure interesting tonight. Um, I just don't see how Apple makes any number or or does well. But uh, again, they've lowered expectations and guidance multiple times in the quarter. So I guess it'll be about guidance going forward. And I, I guess I'll... I was just looking at the straddle. Facebook is pricing at about nine dollars and fifty, roughly about seven percent. And Tesla, which you were just talking about, Tesla is pricing thirty-one bucks as this battle over. When is their earnings tomorrow? Tesla? Ah, oh, that's well, going to be not good. <laughs> Elon. Here's the thing that you both touched on. I know, I know. Here's the thing that you both touched on separately. Um, uh, in some stocks, uh, I, you know, I, I want to say uh, at least the scuttlebutt has been earnings don't matter this week. 
It's the FOMC that matters. And you know what? I'm seeing people say that, professionals, and I'm looking at earnings and how markets are reacting. I'm saying wrong. <laughs> you know, the, the market is reacting to earnings. And uh, uh, maybe, maybe, and this is just my little spider sense here, bad earnings, the market will react to worse than good earnings uh, uh, going higher. Meaning there's a lot of hope in the market that this FOMC uh, 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 is going to be, we're suspending QT. So uh, maybe the next 50 handles is higher, but maybe Fed. the next 200 handles is no, lower. We've been talking about earnings, we haven't talked about Fed as much. I, I think this is really an uh, unimportant Fed meeting. They're, they aren't even expected if they, the next hike is priced in for June. So, you know, I think that this is more data to, is stating that they're data dependent and, you know, we'll keep an eye on things. Or if anything, it might be slightly uh, dovish, but. Uh... Norm, Norm, I agree with you. And I do agree with you on this. I think, however, because of that Monday morning, uh, quantitative tightening back off statement, which paraphrasing went like this, uh, the Fed is seriously considering backing off on its issuance of debt, which is half of QT. Uh, I would be interested. And I think uh, that was a tease of the FOMC uh, uh, possibly saying things like, uh, I think the market was keying on words like patience. Uh, so for those of you uh, 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 QT oriented, quantitative tightening means raising interest rates and selling bonds simultaneously. So if they are, or issuing bonds, if they continue to raise rates, uh, which is possible, uh, uh, as Mike alluded to, when or how, we're not sure, but stop issuing bonds or stop letting debt roll into the market, that's bullish uh, for the market. And uh, uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, it's like we've been saying, this is a big week. Got a lot of earnings and I'm kind of with what you were saying before are more volatile plays that's it the broader market took off yesterday caterpillar up oh, but now we're higher on the day so we were up four handles yesterday we were down 20 we were down 40 at one point so we're still down about Three quarters of a percent for the week. Nothing going on. Again, uh, they have an in, insatiable appetite to take them higher, which is an amazing thing to me because a month ago today, you couldn't find the bid basically in the house. So, and we were. What's interesting is the Nasdaq was actually in a bear market. They don't even talk about it, but the Nasdaq was in a bear market. Now it's probably in a bull market um, in a month, but it actually retreated over twenty five. 23% from the high, and the S&P was 19.95%, and the futures actually were in a bear market, but we we bounced off that and not only uh, exploded up, but we're at a correction territory from what they're saying, and we're basically back on trend to be in a bull market. So, um, you know, it's interesting how in one month everything literally changed, and I think, you know, this administration unfortunately is tied to the stock market more than any other and the funny thing is we're more than two years into the presidency um you know we're you know the s p is up 20 percent in two years and change and listen that's great but it's not epic in any way to anything that we've seen over all of our trading careers which mine is 30 five years at this point um long and this is just nothing and he's saying how great he is and he's making statements about how the market is up more with him than anyone you know like he's making just fake fake news comments and and it's interesting to me you're going to look in this year if we remain stagnant from these levels what are we going to be up 20% in three years, <laughs> you know, and then we'll only be up seven coming into the election. And that's good, but it's not, you know, it's not Clinton-esque. It's not Reagan-esque. It's not any of these other presidents who have had much larger moves during their presidencies. So, you know, he he's in there every day. The market's down yelling at Mnuchin. He's probably screaming at him. Get out there. You know, where's Kudlow? He's at lunch. <laughs> get him. Get him out. The other day when the market was crashing, Kudlow still had like food on it on his Remember, napkin. Kudlow had a heart attack like three months ago or two months ago. <laughs> I know. You know, they're like, get him out there. 
just say good things. <laughs> um, so you've never seen, or we've never seen a president that literally, he must have a Quotron <laughs> on, on his phone where he's like, oh, let me pull up the market. And the guy, you know, it's funny. The guy doesn't support I'm sure he does have positions somehow, but <laughs> he's like pulling up, how's my Apple doing? Like he's like trading the market. It's bizarre. But I wanted to point out, uh, yesterday, volatility ticked up above 20 and a half, and it's now back down to 1841. I mean, those are big moves. And really, I was looking at the S&P, and it was down about 38, and volatility was up like 15%. So if we ever have a day where there's a dislocation or a real down move of 50, 100 handles, this VIX is going to go from 1819 to 30 in a day. That's the trade I think that's going to be important. and. Again, I talked about um, having a dislocation. I think potentially this year we have a market dislocation in a day. Those are two outliers that I think um, may happen uh, in general. Overall, uh, the dollar is weaker. The dollar, the dollar is slowly getting worse. You know, um, talking about vol, uh, just to get back on vol, we have a ton of earnings. Apple, you know, one of the most polarizing names in the world. A lot of corporate earnings. Biggest week, and we have the Fed tomorrow. You know, this rattle for the S and P for tomorrow is twenty dollars. So for two full days, including a ton of earnings and the Fed, is only four dollars. That's nothing. No. Well, listen. The one thing, and we talked about it yesterday or the day before, was back in the day, if Intel missed, the market would get wrecked, or IBM missed, the market would get wrecked. If IBM was good, the market would explode up. But what's happened with the algo, and this is something that's important for everyone to realize. Not one stock moves the market. Like tomorrow, Apple could miss. And really, I know it's crazy. It's harder for the NASDAQ, but the S&P could be green. Apple could be down $10 and the S&P could be green. I mean, that's never that never happens. But this is the new Paragon market that we're in. And this market basically is... Um, you know, able to shrug off any individual name and they just buy other names. So, you know, it's interesting in general, uh, but Apple will move the market, but not greatly, not greatly. It'll move itself. Um, the straddle is dirt cheap in Apple, I think, but you know, you can't really buy it because if it doesn't move, you die with that thing. Um, but it's, <laughs> but it's $8. Uh, I don't know. You think Apple can move eight dollars, seven dollars? It moves six dollars Friday, you know, without earnings. So um, it'll be interesting to have Tom take a look. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ratio spreads you could do that look okay. The only problem with these individual names, and I've always felt this way, is that the individual name can move so much more than the broad market. So I don't like to I don't like to trade the individual name as much on the short vol side um, unless you're hedged on the wings. Uh, but Apple has opportunity, like you said, really the probably the better opportunity is in uh, Tesla. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen there? How when is their bond due? I wonder we should look into that. Um, I know they have a uh, what was it? What was his thing? Uh, that must said that day what the stock it was like marijuana day i forgot the uh four two oh come on four two oh right 420 so the, he got the stock above the strike at 360 where those put warrants are for exactly. the uh for for the stock but the stock is nowhere near there but i know they have a debt payment due so it'll be interesting uh these earnings are very very important in general so um you know we'll um uh, you know we'll keep an eye on um you know, we'll keep an eye on, on that. Um, and other than that, uh, the schedule looks uh, like we have Tracy today. And uh, Mike, who else is coming on? Coming on. We have uh, 11 a.m. Tracy Schubert uh, showing us technical analysis. And then uh, 2 p.m. we have uh, Option School with Vince and Tom uh, specializing in earnings today, or focusing, I should say, in earnings today. Absolutely not, Michael. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we have, we're definitely going to be specializing earnings. We have so much of it this week. We also want to touch on uh, option structures uh, for trending markets, which is uh, 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 something uh, uh, we haven't talked about enough of. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm just goofing around. There's nothing but earnings to talk about today, oh, right? Know. All right. Well, we'll be back to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, and we'll see everybody in the uh, 
We'll hear from everybody in the chat, and I look forward to a good trading day today. A bit on the quiet side, waiting for Apple. Apple, right after the close, it should uh, should be a doozy and uh, lead us into a full-fledged week of earnings. So look forward to that, and again, we'll see everybody in the chat. Good luck, everybody.